Newton's laws applies to everything around us today, but how does Newton's laws apply to sport? In this documentary, we'll explore how Newton's three laws applies to soccer and how an understanding of these three laws can improve performance. Newton's first law, known as inertia, states that an object will remain at rest or remain at the same velocity in the same direction until an outside force acts upon it. An example would be a car. If the car crashes and you don't have a seatbelt on, the car will stop but you will continue to move forward. In soccer, being able to change direction quickly and efficiently is key in order to get to soccer balls when they're free. According to Newton's law of inertia, if you're travelling in the same direction, you will continue to tra travel in that direction at the same speed until an outside force acts upon you. When looking at a player's soccer boots, the studs or cleats on the bottom of the boot actually increase friction. This allows you to stop efficiently and change direction. The red arrow here shows the momentum of the body, but due to friction caused by the cleats, you are able to change direction more efficiently. Another example where we can see inertia in soccer is when you're taking a throw in. Firstly, the ball and hands accelerate in the same direction towards the target. Eventually though, your hands stop and release the ball but your hands will stop moving and the ball will continue in the same direction until stopped by another force. Newton's second law states that the force acting upon an object is equal to the mass of it multiplied by the acceleration. This is seen in the formula force equals mass times acceleration. In soccer, Newton's second law is seen when you are running. The force exerted by your leg is equal to your mass times your acceleration. This means that if you were to compare a taller person with more mass and a smaller person with less mass, the smaller person would require less force exerted by their foot compared to the taller person in order to run at the same speed. Another example is when kicking a ball. In soccer, there are three types of balls. There's a size 3, 4 and 5. Obviously, the larger the ball, the more it's going to weigh. So, the ball that weighs the most, which is a size 5, at 420 grams, is going to require more force to kick at the same distance as a size 4 ball. Newton's third law states that if body A exerts a force on body B, body B will exert a force that is equal and opposite in direction to the force made by body A. In other words, for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. Newton's third law can be seen in multiple skills and other parts of a soccer match. In this occasion, it is seen when a ball hits a crossbar. The action is moving towards the crossbar, and the equal and opposite reaction is the ball hitting it and travelling backwards. In this case though, some of the energy is actually absorbed by the crossbar, meaning it won't travel as far back. Another example is when you head the ball. When you move towards the ball, this is the action. The reaction is the ball travelling away from once it hits the head, but also your head that ricochets back. The last example of Newton's third law in soccer is also when you're running. The action is when your foot pushes off the ground, which is pushing backwards. The reaction is your body actually travelling forward. This is all due to friction, and friction is increased by the cleats.